Okay, we've got a text one, text two, not bold here. Usually it is, but anyway. Um, this is a paired passage or cross text connection. Let's read the question as we usually do. How would Doobie and colleagues, text two, most likely respond to the consensus view in text one? So we want to know the consensus view. So let's figure out as we read text one, let's define that consensus view. It's often the case that your condition is more than just a conclusion, so you have some aspect of the text you need to figure out. So it's worth noting, even writing down, as you read it, you want to make sure you identify that condition, in this case, a consensus view, because that is what we want to use the next text to compare against. Okay, many studies in psychology have shown that people seek out information even when they know in advance that they have no immediate use for it. And that they won't directly benefit. So why would they want to seek out that information? Okay, that's curious. Such findings support the consensus view. Here it is. Among researchers of curiosity. Namely, that curiosity is not instrumental, but instead represents a drive to acquire information for its own sake. So they kind of define what curiosity is. The consensus view is that curiosity is driven basically for its own sake right it's not so much to get an answer to a question just people are naturally inclined i guess to be curious okay so let's see what text two would say about this while acknowledging that acquiring information is a powerful motivator Rachel Ratchet Dubin colleagues ran an experiment to test whether emphasizing the usefulness of scientific information could increase curiosity about it. So is curiosity related to usefulness? That's what this test is. So test usefulness. Remember our consensus view above was that it didn't even have to be useful. It is just curious for its own curiosity's sake. So let's see what the test results are. My guess is they're going to be that it was useful. Again, I start doing this too often now that I'm reading them, I'm interjecting. Let's keep reading. They found that when research involving rats and fruit flies was presented as having medical applications for humans, participants expressed greater interest in learning about it than when the research was not presented as useful. So if it's useful, then we're curious. So this shows a link between curiosity. So this would disagree with text one. So suggesting, conceding, they wouldn't concede, pointing out, it's challenging, disputing, they probably dispute the idea. Um, well, let's take a look. A, by suggesting that curiosity may not be exclusively motivated by the desire to merely acquire information. Well, yeah, here's an extra reason, a usefulness reason, to want to acquire information, and that pushed people to be more curious or more interested. So that's, that's actually true. Let's hold on to that one. B, by conceding that people may seek out information that serves no immediate purpose only because they think they can use it later. No, there, there's no concept of using it later or because if it has immediate or later, that's just simply not addressed in the text. It's simply it's either useful or it's not useful. Not it's not useful today, but will be tomorrow. Wrong idea. C, by pointing out that it is challenging to determine when information seeking serves no goal beyond acquiring information. That just sounds like a whole bunch of garbly gook that's not right. By pointing out it is challenging to determine when information seeking serves no goal, well, no, they kind of set up an experiment where they created a scenario that seeking information served a goal, that is, it was useful, and ones where it didn't. So I think this is just wrong. D, by disputing the idea that curiosity can help explain apparently purposeless information seeking behaviors. So they are disputing, that part is correct, they would dispute that curiosity can, can help explain purposeless information seeking behaviors. No, this would say our study 
helped explain text one and supported it, that we can tell why we're curious about meaningless things for its own sake only. That's the opposite idea that's wrong. A is the right answer, okay? They are suggesting that curiosity is more than about merely acquiring information for its own sake. They ran an experiment and the experiment showed greater curiosity when there was something important about what you actually learned from the curiosity. A is the right idea. Okay, we've got another cross-text connection, paired passage question. And what is the question condition? How would researchers in two most likely respond to the conclusion presented in the underlined portion of text one? So this is pretty typical, but we want to focus on the underlined claim in text one. So what do we have here? Polar bears sustain themselves primarily by hunting seals in the Arctic sea ice, but rising ocean temperatures are causing the ice to diminish. Raising concerns about polar bear population declines as these large predators Seal hunting habitats continue to shrink. A 2020 study examining polar bear populations across the Arctic concluded that populations affected by sea ice loss are at great risk of extinction by the end of the 21st century. Okay, so the polar bears are going away just because they're losing their environment. That's our conclusion. What does text two say about that? Text two. Monitoring carried out by researchers from the Norwegian Polar Bear Institute shows that the polar bear population in the Arctic archipelago of Svalbard remains stable and well-nourished despite rapidly declining sea ices. So basically the evidence, we see this so often, evidence shows that the conclusion or the claim is wrong. It just, you know, it makes sense, that conclusion, given the situation, but the evidence doesn't support it. Very typical in some of these SATs. The researchers attribute this population's resilience in part to a shift in feeding strategies. In addition to hunting seals, the polar bears have begun relying on a diet of reindeer meat and bird's eggs. So the polar bears aren't just dependent on seals. That's the idea here. There's some reasonable explanation of the evidence for the fact that they're not declining or going extinct. So what would text two say about text one? They don't understand all the details. They don't account for the ability of a polar bear to change its diet. Let's see. A, by noting that it neglects the possibility of some polar bear populations adapting to changes in their environment. Text two would note that some polar bears, the Svalbard ones, for example, Svalbard ones, however you pronounce it, can adapt to changes in their environment. So they can change their diet as a result in this case. So yeah, text one is neglecting that. This looks pretty good. Let's check the others. B, by suggesting that is likely incorrect about the rates at which warming ocean temperatures have caused... I no, they're not questioning the actual environmental change. C, by asserting that it overlooks polar bear populations that have not yet been affected by loss of seal hunting habitats. No, text two would not say that about text one. Text one might turn around and say, hey, you gave me one example where they're changing habits, but elsewhere, they still have a problem. This is not what text two would say. It's something that would probably would come out of text one. Anyway, it's wrong. D, by arguing that it fails to account for polar bears' reliance on a single seal hunting strategy. No, completely false. The whole evidence of text two is that polar bears do not rely on a single seal hunting strategy or even a single diet. That is seals. They can adapt. A is the correct answer. Some polar bears, at least the ones they looked at, are able to adapt to changes in their environment by changing their diet in this case. 